the new king disregarded conventional royal protocol and granted his younger sister her rightful place in the 21st century kingdom. On Monday, King Charles III led the royal procession into Westminster Abbey for the state funeral of Queen Elizabeth II. The new monarch entered the London church after the Queen's coffin, accompanied by his wife and consort, Queen Camilla. They were followed by Princess Anne and Sir Timothy Lawrence, the late monarch's sole child. On September 8, at Balmoral Castle, their mother passed away with Charles and Anne by her side. The coffin was then transported from Scotland to London with the Princess Royal. On Monday, King Charles III led the royal procession into Westminster Abbey for the state funeral of Queen Elizabeth II. The new monarch entered the London church after the Queen's coffin, accompanied by his wife and consort, Queen Camilla. They were followed by Princess Anne and Sir Timothy Lawrence, the late monarch's sole child. On September 8, at Balmoral Castle, their mother passed away with Charles and Anne by her side. The coffin was then transported from Scotland to London with the Princess Royal. Anne wrote the following in honour of her mother. I had the good fortune to be present for my mother's final 24 hours. It has been a delight and an honour to travel with her on her last trips. It has been both humbling and inspiring to see how much love and respect so many people have exhibited on these excursions. The Queen, who is known to have had a close bond with her mother, was a key figure in the ceremonies held in her honour. Since then, a royal historian has asserted that Charles acknowledged his sister's assistance to the late Queen, and honoured it during the funeral service. On this week's Royally Us podcast, the biographer and commentator Gareth Russell was a special guest. According to him, King Charles appeared to honour his sister Princess Anne, for her decades of devoted service to the Queen and the firm. Giving his sister a place of honour and easing up on the elder responsibilities, have been the King's main concerns. Giving Princess Anne her due standing in the monarchy for the 21st century, Mr Russell continued, shows that she truly is her brother's confidant. We have seen that she is a person who is experiencing enormous sadness over the loss of her mother, and she is someone who is greatly recognised in Britain for her charity efforts. The historian went on to say that Charles was abandoning antiquated royal customs that gave male royals precedence over female royals. Despite being the second child of the Queen, Anne is positioned below her two younger brothers and their progeny in the succession. This is so that from the Act of Settlement of 1701 until 2013, when the Queen altered the law to ensure that sons and daughters of the monarch now have an equal right to the throne, male primogeniture acted as protocol for the royal family. We witnessed a female member of the royal family marching behind the coffin for the first time, Mr Russell said, adding that Anne's seat was an effort to avoid giving precedence and favour to male members of the family over their sisters. In addition to attending her mother on her final voyage, Anne also conducted the unusual ritual for the first time ever, making history. The Vigil of the Princes was held at St Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh on September 12 in the evening. Members of the royal family stand guard around their relatives' caskets as they lie in state as part of the tradition. Anne became the first woman to ever participate, standing beside her brothers Charles, Prince Andrew, and Prince Edward. Traditionally, only male family members serve as guards. The royal company of archers, who were manning the Queen's coffin around